It's Thursday, December 3rd, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. Employers in Barbados have been put on notice. The Barbados Workers' Union last night sent a strong message that unfair treatment of workers would not be tolerated. It came on the heels of yesterday's strike action by G4S workers following a breakdown in wage negotiations. BWU General Secretary Tony Moore in a press release warned that the union's executive council is prepared to escalate this matter to the highest level if needs be to ensure that G4S and other companies understand that the rules, principles and practices governing industrial relations in the country must be adhered to. The warning came as the BWU readied itself for talks with Labour Minister Colin Jordan this morning at 9.30 on the issue. The Barbados Bar Association has given its full support to recent comments by Attorney General Dale Marshall that changes will come into the Legal Profession Act. In fact, Bar President Roslyn Smith-Miller says the move is not only timely but overdue. The legislation is expected to, among other things, deal more effectively with attorneys who misappropriate clients' funds. Smith Miller, who said that the bar had for many years advocated for a more efficient and robust disciplinary regime, also believed the time had come for the bar's disciplinary committee to be given more powers. Barbadians are being told they can look forward to greater transparency when it comes to public sector projects. Minister in the Ministry of Investment, Marsha Cadell, told an online forum that government was in the process of planning the establishment of a public investment dashboard that would provide pertinent information relating to public sector investment projects, including cost overruns, procurement procedures, and company selection. This development forms part of government's ongoing $80 million public sector modernization program. International, regional and government leaders yesterday launched a broad-based project to support actions to mitigate climate change and its serious health impacts on Caribbean countries. The Pan-American Health Organization is coordinating the EU Cari Forum Strengthening Climate Resilient Health Systems Project, which seeks to advance public understanding of climate change effects and strengthen the ability of health systems to respond to climate-related health impacts. PAHO's director, Dr. Caricia Etienne, said the project will also assist the region in accessing funding for coping with climate change. We are at a crucial point in time in the Americas when we must increase our solidarity and intergovernmental collaboration to address these issues that are arguably the health challenges of the century. The, the Americas must embrace mechanisms for countries to come together around climate change. I'm especially pleased with the partners who are here this afternoon. And, and I do believe that the strength of having CARICOM, SICA, and ACTO working together provides a strong platform for cooperation between integration mechanisms. The second le lesson, invest in health systems. Robust and well-resourced healthcare systems are vital to protect us from the impacts of pandemics. And they are also necessary to address the health impacts of climate change. It is now more evident than ever that access to healthcare, equity, and protection of the environment are the underpinnings of a robust global economy. There's regional and international news after this short break.
To news from our regional neighbors now, Guyana may face challenges in meeting some of the requirements for the first COVID-19 vaccine. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. The Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at special freezing temperatures, and Guyana does not have those facilities in place for such storage, according to the health minister, Dr. Frank Anthony. The challenge that we have with this particular Pfizer vaccine, while it's highly efficacious, um, you have a challenge with cold storage because it has to be stored at minus 70. And that um, can create some logistical challenges for the people doing the immunization. The health minister said the ministry will be looking at the Moderna vaccine, which does not require cold storage facilities. But that vaccine is still to receive full approval. The approval could come later this month. Dr. Anthony said Guyana is still moving to put systems in place for the various vaccines that are being rolled out. We have also started work locally. Uh, which include looking at our vaccination sites and um, improving our cold storage, expanding that cold storage. In some cases, we have to um, add uh, new storage rooms and things like that. We have also uh, start acquiring the types of freezers that we'll need for the vaccines. Uh, so we have um, been in that process of procurement to get those freezers. And, of course, we have to train healthcare staff to be able to administer the vaccine. And finally, reports out of the USA COVID-19 hospitalizations have more than tripled nationwide since October, leaving healthcare systems stretched to the limit. We get more in this CBS News report. We are at the precipice of 100,000 hospitalizations. That's nearly double what we saw in the first peak of the pandemic in the spring. And this is one of the reasons why the White House Coronavirus Task Force says the country is in a dangerous place. Hospitals are being hit by a tidal wave of new coronavirus cases, with predictions of it getting worse. December and January and February are going to be rough times. Daily coronavirus cases have continued to spike with more than 180,000 a day. That's doubled in the last month. And the numbers are expected to rise now that it's been a week since Thanksgiving. And I think everyone's overwhelmed at this point. So this sudden rise uh, that you're seeing is very concerning. Well, we're not flattening the curve at this point. In hard-hit Tennessee, notary public Adrian Bowling has seen a surge in people desperate to get their affairs in order. People in ICUs. What is it like in the room when you're asking people in their hospital beds what the, what their wishes are, what they want for their will. It is a very sobering time. You can tell from the look in their eyes, um, it's almost as if it's becoming real that am I not going home? Is this going to be my final resting place? In California, yeah. average new cases and deaths have jumped more than 50% in just two weeks. In North Dakota and Rhode Island, 90% of ICUs are filled. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.